Hello and welcome to the worship of Chorley and Leyland Methodists. This week we're reflecting on Luke chapter 12 verses 32 to 40 and this challenges us to think about being ready, being ready for service and being constant in prayer. We have a call to worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, God speaks, summoning us. In the perfection of the beauty all around us, God shines forth, illuminating our hearts. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice and those who go the right way, honour God. They shall receive salvation from our God. Those who worship God with acts of love and mercy, God is pleased to give them the kingdom. Come, let us worship, and let our worship be justice and righteousness. So let's worship our God together. So let us pray together. God of light and love, you take delight in your creation. Ignite our spirits to worship you with sincerity. Illumine our minds with the truth of your word. Inspire our hearts to seek your treasure alone, that our hearts may be pure and our actions may be noble and just as we share your love. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and promise we pray. 
Amen. And so as we remember God's promise to us, we remember God is a God of unfailing love. And so let us confess our sins to God. God of unfailing love, it is often hard to remain faithful. You ask us to share our wealth with those in need, yet we hoard our possessions and guard our wealth. You call us to rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan and plead for the widow. Yet our pursuits are often self-serving, ignoring those in need of our care. Forgive us and cleanse us, O God. Move us to be a people of justice and propel us on the path of love and service. Though our sins are like scarlet, do not be afraid, for God has washed us clean. The Lord takes pleasure in opening God's realm to us. Rejoice and come in and know God's love and grace. Amen. St Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 32, Riches in Heaven. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. Provide for yourselves purses that don't wear out and save your riches in heaven, where they will never decrease because no thief can get them, no moth can destroy them, for your heart will always be where your riches are. Watchful servants. Be ready for whatever comes, dressed for action and with your lamps lit, like servants who are waiting for their master to come back from a wedding feast. When he comes and knocks, they will open the door for him at once. How happy are those servants whose master finds them awake and ready when he returns. I tell you, he will take off his coat, ask them to sit down and will wait on them. How happy they are if he finds them ready.
even if, she, if he should come at midnight or even later. And you can be sure that if the owner of a house knew the time when the thief would come, he would not let the thief break into his house. And you too must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you I wonder if you have been like me that when beginning a race with friends as children or when surrounded by children you hear the words echo ready steady go and there would be a competition to see who would win the race or a favorite game that my godchildren like to play is hide and seek ready or not here i come which would be followed by chaos reigning as they attempt to find one another or hide in some of the most chaotic places our reading today is about being ready perhaps but perhaps rather then ready or not, here I come. The words would be, ready or not, you don't know when I'm coming. The reading begins with this promise that the nature of God is to give 
us the kingdom of God. This is what God wants us to do. God is a generous God who wants us to share in the kingdom. God is not a God who wants to hold back, but rather God is the God, the true and only God who wants to give us the kingdom. As it says, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It isn't like that race as a child where only one person will win, but rather where we can all inherit a prize. The challenge is for us all to have our hearts open and set on the kingdom in order to receive it. God wants to give us it. It's not like, oh, well, I'm not sure whether I really want to give you it. Have you been at a child's birthday party where another child has arrived with a present and they don't really want to hand over the present? But rather, God is a generous and bountiful God who wants to give us this kingdom who wants to give us his kingdom and his kingdom life. And he wants to give us things that will last, not things that are going to go off, things that are going to fall apart, things that are going to perish. But God wants to give us things that are everlasting. And so the reading talks about, you know, us working for things that are going to last, make purses that don't wear out and treasure that will not fail. Treasure that we lay up in the kingdom through devotion to the kingdom will not fail. When we have things that are set in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, it is safe and it is never going to be removed from us. And what we are reminded of is where your treasure is, there your heart is also. We cannot store up security in a future by laying up earthly possessions, by storing lots of possessions in our homes. But our true security is to be found in God's providence, in God providing for us, in God's kingdom. And as the reading moves on, we discover that this is to be found by being ready and being steady. Being ready and being steady. Be dressed ready for action, ready for service. I, at one point in my ministry, was involved in the Scouts for a bit. I would often be invited to lead the Scouts St George's Day um, services. And the Scouts motto, as some of you might know, is be prepared. And Baden Powell wrote this, that to be prepared means you are always in a state of readiness in mind and body to do your duty. Baden Powell was the founder of the Scouts movement. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to, by Jesus to be ready for service, to have our sleeves rolled up and ready to get our hands dirty. And Jesus gives us an example of loving service as he kneels and washes the disciples' feet, getting involved in the nitty gritty, literally the nitty gritty of everyday life. Think about the nitty gritty that they would have had on their feet from walking the dusty streets of Jerusalem and the dusty streets of Galilee. And Jesus kneels and washes them. He shows us what loving service means and he takes loaves and fishes and breaks them and feeds the hungry. He demonstrates 
what going the extra mile means as he tells us the story of the Good Samaritan, not just as those who have the right label, but those who do the right things in serving their neighbours, you know, picking up somebody and taking them to the inn so that they can be cared for after they've been beaten up. So being ready. But that's only the first part of verse 35. The second part of verse 35 is have your lamps lit in the tabernacle, the place where the Jewish people would go to pray. Lamps would be lit with pure oil so that they would burn steadily. There would be a constancy in them. And we as the people of God, living spirit-filled lives, need to have a constancy in our lives. We need to be fueled by God's Holy Spirit, fueled for our relationship with God, that we can be steady in our walk with Jesus. <coughs> we need to have our lamps lit, to have that constancy in our lives. I don't think that it's accidental that the two parts of verse 35 have be ready for service and then our lamps lit for prayer. There seems to be a very natural rhythm in the rhythm of discipleship, of doing and being that go together, of service and prayer. Our discipleship is not just about serving, nor is it just about praying, but about both. Mark Wakelin, who was the president of the Methodist Conference in 2012, spoke to those of us being ordained about the natural rhythms we find in life. And the same applies to every one of us as disciples. He talked about asking us, what did I do last? Did I serve or pray? Did I be or do? And he likened it to breathing in and breathing out. We have to breathe in and then breathe out. Whatever we did last, we need to do the opposite next. So praying fuels our serving and serving fuels our praying. And together they form a natural rhythm in our discipleship. The passage moves us to think about being prepared for Jesus's second coming and being awake and ready for it. In Luke, we are challenged on several occasions to stay awake. At times, this is marked by the task that disciples should be praying. Watchfulness is marked by prayer. Whereas sleep, indicates neglect and unpreparedness. As disciples of Jesus, we need to be alert and watchful to where we can serve, to how we can participate in prayer with those around us, in sharing in the compassion of Jesus with those in need. And one day we will be accountable for how we have lived and how we have served, how we have remained constant in our praying. Jesus will return. He will be the master. We read the master will return like the master returning from the wedding feast. And instead of the servant serving the master, we will discover how the master will serve the servants at the great banquet. And this is a picture of the ba great banquet that we hear about happening at the end of times. Servants who are found to be waiting and watching will be blessed. If we've been prepared, ready for service, ready for action, if we've been found watching and waiting, we will be blessed. The challenge for us is to be ready. Readiness is about trusting, about being fueled for service. Trusting 
our God, the Heavenly Father, who provides for all our needs, living in the way of the kingdom, being ready to push aside the ways of the world in order to live in the way of the kingdom and making our lives a constant prayer, remembering the rhythm of breathing in and breathing out, serving and praying. May we be ready. May we be constantly fueled in our praying and our serving, that this will give us life to live lives of service, faithfully watching and trusting in the providence of our God, who longs to give us the kingdom. Amen. Our callings for me, our callings for you, our callings for all the church. Our calling invites us to engage in the mission of Christ on earth. I'm called to worship God my King. I'm called to learn to care and grow. I'm called to serve, to give of me, and tell of His grace and love. Tell all of His grace and love. Some are called to wondrous lands afar. Some are called to serve at home. But each of us is called by Christ to mission where we I'm called to worship God my King I'm called to learn to care and grow I'm called to serve to give of me And tell of His grace and love Tell all of His grace and love Your Tell all of his grace.
So in response to God's great love and remembering the call to be constant in prayer, let us pray. Loving God, so often your coming into our lives takes us by surprise. It finds us unprepared. We expect to find you in church, blessing our offering of money. But we do not expect to find you begging from us on the streets. We expect to meet you in bread and wine. We do not expect to meet you in the eyes of a starving child. We expect to find you in the emotion of prayer and praise. We do not expect to find you in the dull pains of everyday living. Loving God, we pray for your church. We pray that you may open our eyes to be a people of faith, ready to respond to your call. We pray for the life of your church. We give you thanks that you call us to be a people in the space beyond the walls of a church. We give you thanks that we worship online together, that you call us as a community to worship you in spirit and in truth and to reflect on your word. We pray for the world where faith in you is sorely tested and so many long for the dawn of a new day. We pray for the situations that we see on the TV and in the media at this time that are close to our hearts, where we, with watchful hearts, pray with your compassion, remembering that when two hearts pray, it reminds people that you care, God, and we care, and we share together in your compassion. We pray for humankind, that hope might come to get to those who suffer and courage for those who are afraid. We remember the promise at the beginning of today's gospel passage, do not be afraid. And we pray for all those who are anxious at this time. May your love and your promises be with all those who are afraid. Loving God, fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may hold ourselves in readiness for the coming into our lives of Jesus Christ at the time least expected. And help us to look forward to the day when we will gather round your banqueting table and you as the master will serve us all. But help us to serve you faithfully in all the ways we can, in all the places that we can, in all the times that we can, for as long as we can, for your name's sake. Amen. Oh.
for joining in worship today. We are grateful for those who put together the worship week by week and who have served in this way for so long and I know that we will in particular miss Phil Goff and his presence online and we do think of Phil and the family as they move in the coming weeks. We will continue to be present and to share together. People get ready. We are dressed for love. People get ready. We are dressed for service. People get ready. We are dressed for mercy and compassion. People get ready. We are dressed to shine the light of Christ. You are dressed as children of God. And may you know the presence of the living God who will continually fill you with the Holy Spirit to live in the way of loving service all your days. May you know the arms of God to surround you. May you know the G risen Jesus Christ to walk with you and the Spirit of God to strengthen you to serve God all your days. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward